Speaker Anthony Rendon called for these public hearings after several women who work in and around California's capital spoke out in October about a culture they believe protects perpetrators and discourages victims from coming forward. Lawmakers are now examining the existing harassment policies in the government. Critics say they aren't tough enough. Today we're going to be setting the stage for a serious and comprehensive effort to reform the Assembly's harassment policies, procedures and training. In doing so, we can begin to change a culture that for far too long has been silent and protective of people who use their positions of power to prey on others. Yesterday, Assemblyman Raul Bocanegra from Los Angeles announced his resignation in a letter to Speaker Anthony Rendon. This after a co-worker claimed she was assaulted by Bocanegra back in 2009 when he was a chief of staff. He put his hands on me, completely unwelcome, completely um, without warning, and um, intimate parts of my body were touched that he had no right to touch. And a Senate colleague, Tony Mendoza, another Democrat from Los Angeles, was stripped of his committee chairmanships following allegations of sexual harassment. My question again, has a complaint been received regarding a member of the legislature, specifically of the assembly, by any of the present members? Yes, we have received complaints. Officials say the way the rules are now, the chamber does not track these harassment complaints filed against lawmakers. And some members question whether the system is designed to protect lawmakers and not the victims. We here in the legislature must demonstrate by our actions and not just words that we will not tolerate sexual harassment in any form within our workplaces. Assemblymember Melissa Melendez from Lake Elsinore has pushed for a bill that would provide stronger whistleblower protections for legislative staffers, but the bill has died in the Senate. Senate pro tem Kevin DeLeon has repeatedly declined to comment on the issue. 